Hey, I'm Robbie with Category 5 Technology TV, and today I'm going to be showing you why you should never buy or sell an El Cheapo power supply. And when we say El Cheapo, we mean basically the power supplies that are included with your computer chassis purchase, uh, even the power supplies that you can purchase for under $50 Canadian. Anything in around there are probably going to be problematic, and we're going to be showing you today uh, why that is and why we should avoid those types of power supplies. So for my demonstration today, I'm going to be using two generic power supplies that just came out of retail chassis. I've got a 300 watt and a 430 watt there on the bottom. Uh, neither of these carry any kind of brand labels, so they are just generic, no name if you will. Uh, and they're certainly in the sub $50 uh, Canadian range, but they were just uh, pulled directly from retail chassis that were purchased. On the other hand, over here we've got the Thermaltake line. I've got a uh, Thermaltake entry level pure power 430 watt power supply on the top. Down here, stepping up from there, is a 550 watt from Thermaltake. And here we've got the uh, Tough Power from Thermaltake. It's 850 watts, and we're going to be taking a look at that in just a few minutes, comparing all of these power supplies together and uh, finding out why we should stay away from these bad boys. Now what I'm holding in my hand here is something that should be in every IT technician's toolbox if you ask me. This is a frozen CPU LCD power supply tester. And of course it does exactly what you would think from the name. Uh, basically what happened to me, and I'll just be completely blunt honest with you here, when we first started our business several years back uh, doing computer sales and service, one of the mistakes that I made, you know, we learned from our mistakes, but one of those mistakes was that we actually allowed these types of power supplies out of the shop. We would bring in computer chassis or computer cha uh, cases, pardon me, uh, that would include these types of power supplies, and we would allow, you know, uh, that was a great deal, right? So we would allow those to go out of the shop. But I started to see a trend, because after about a year, uh, we would start to see these computers coming back into the shop uh, for miscellaneous repairs, and they were hardware problems. Now, software, of course, you've got to maintain, and you've got to have your computer actually physically cleaned out of dust and things like that. But actual uh, hardware failures, that's not something I want to see within, you know, five years, let alone one. Uh, so we started looking at the power supplies and realizing that more often than not, the power supply had to be replaced. Now, looking at longevity, one year for a power supply is just unacceptable. But that said, we also started to detect miscellaneous issues with the power supply. So that's when we picked up the power supply tester. And I'm going to show you today the kinds of issues that these kinds of power supplies can, uh, can cause to your system. If your power supply like this is going to be providing dirty power or fluctuating power that's going to be fluctuating between different voltages, that's going to cause some problems with stability as well as uh, with the actual performance of your computer. We step into a slightly higher end power supply such as the Thermaltake Pure Power 430 and we're going to start to see a lot more consistency when it comes to the actual voltage that's being sent to our computer and because of that our motherboard's going to be happy, our CPU's going to be happy, our RAM is going to be happy Everything in our system is going to be a lot happier with a Thermaltake power supply uh, than it is with one of these because it's going to be receiving a steady, consistent voltage and it's in the right voltage range. Um, so that's going to improve performance tenfold. You'll actually be surprised how much a better power supply is going to improve the performance of your PC. All right, first up I want to take a look at this 300 watt generic power supply. All I'm going to do is hook this up to my power supply tester and that power supply tester is going to just check out all the voltages, make sure that everything's consistent and make sure that this power supply is going to be providing clean power and consistent power to our computer. Now you hear that beep? That immediately tells us that there's a problem with this power supply. Let's take a closer look. Now you can see that there's two problems being reported by the power supply tester with this particular power supply, the 300 watt. And what that's telling us uh, up in the top left hand corner is that our, our what's supposed to be a 5 volt signal is fluctuating between about 4.8 volts and 5.2. So that's sending basically dirty power. Our computer is expecting to be receiving a pure 5 volt signal. Instead, because of the 0.4 variance fluctuation, we're receiving a dirty signal. We're getting uh, basically a fluctuation in the power, which is going up and down and up and down consistently. So when our computer is expecting a perfectly clean 5 volt signal and receiving such a dirty signal, uh, that's going to possibly cause damage to our motherboard, including blown out capacitors and things like that. And of course, if you're using like a, a socket 478 or something uh, that's a little harder to find these days, uh, you could run into a situation where you have to not only replace your motherboard, but because that motherboard no longer, uh, you know, you can't buy CPUs or motherboards in that, uh, in that range, you may end up having to replace both your motherboard, your CPU, plus possibly your RAM and your video card. Uh, so that can be very, very costly. So that's why we start looking at uh, buying new power supplies uh, as a preliminary 
uh, step to preventing damage to our computers. Let's take a look at this 430 watt power supply as well and see what kind of problems we can expect from that generic power supply. Okay, so I've just fired power into this and we can see that there is a problem on the 3.3 volt signal. Um, it's supposed to be receiving exactly 3.3 volts, however, we're seeing that uh, right now it's receiving 3.6. Oh, and it's fluctuating. Now it's gone down to 3.5. So what that tells me is that this power supply has some inconsistency. Now 3.5 would be acceptable, but because there's fluctuation there, when it first fired up it was 3.7, 3.8. There again, I just uh, plugged it back in and went up to 3.6 and then back down to 3.5. So we can see that it's not providing consistently clean power. Interesting thing with this one as well is that I'm noticing as we're doing this test that um, occasionally after I turn it off and back on, it's not coming back on. Um, so that tells us, now see if I unplug the power from the power supply tester, that resets it and then plug it back in, we can see that it's fired back up. So what that tells me is that this power supply is not able to even handle a load. So there's a problem not only on the 3.3 volt channel, but also in its ability to hold a load. So that means that uh, this power supply is going in the garbage. So let's get this one off the power supply tester and we're gonna hook up our first Thermaltake product and find out how much more consistent we can expect our power to be. This power supply is the Thermaltake Pure Power 430 watt, basically what we would consider an entry level power supply. This is something that we would put into uh, generic systems, residential systems, or if uh, somebody, one of our clients had a uh, power supply that was defective or one of these generics that uh, was showing any kinds of signs of uh, causing potential damage to the user's computer, we would put in one of these as long as this was sufficient power. So at 430 watts, that's, uh, that's certainly sufficient for most uh, residential computers um, and certainly office computers, uh, but higher end gaming systems, we're going to be looking at uh, uh, more powerful power supplies. But let's hook this up to my power supply tester just to, uh, to show us what kind of power we can expect from this unit. And you'll notice that with the Thermaltake power supplies, I was mentioning earlier about the cabling, these cables are nicely wound. And what that does for us is that not only is it a little bit cleaner inside of our system, it makes it easier to manage the cables, and you can see that they're, they're much more independent. These cables don't tend to get tangled uh, like the other cables do. I can easily just pull out one cable and they're not tangled. Um, but the other advantage to this is the fact that in our computer system, a cable like this, now see, they're tangled, <laughs> something like this is going to block airflow because there's just so many cables just kind of, you know, hanging about the system. With these guys, on the other hand, they're easy to tie up, they're easy to tie into the uh, computer chassis itself, and so it's going to allow an increase of uh, airflow into the system and out of the system so that you can get a cooler, uh, cooler running computer system, and that's another way to improve performance.